This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth. On this day, one unlike we've ever seen before or will ever see again, we have to celebrate that we serve an on-time God, one who is with us in, in all times and all places, who never lets us down, who would never leave us nor forsake us. We greet you as, as now has become our custom, a, a common greeting that we want to be sure that we lift up for everyone who might not know who we are. And we want to know where you have found yourself this morning. Welcome to the joyful, we rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and weary, come and take your rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out, may you find community among us. Bienvenidos los que están alegres, nos arreglamos con ustedes. Bienvenidos todos los que están cansados, aquí un con encontrarán descanso. Bienvenidos los que sienten solos y abandonados, lo siento, que se sientan acompañados entre nosotros. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger, to the refugee. May you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, every identity. May you find hospitality here. For the God who delights in all of creation is in our midst. Amen. Amen. Damos, uno, damos una bienvenida al extranjero, al extraño, al refugiado que aquí encuentren seguridad. Bienvenidos. Todos los que vienen de otras partes a cada raza, orientación, identidad, que encuentre hospitalidad en este lugar. Porque el Dios que se deleta en toda la creación está aquí en medio nuestro. College Hill is a multicultural family of faith which welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry, and in all the world. We hope that you find something in our prayers and praise, in our music or ministry that makes you feel a part of our family and most of all of God's family. All are welcome here. College Hill es una familia multicultural de fe que acoge la diversidad en nuestra ad adoración, en nuestro ministerio y en todo el mundo. Esperamos que encuentren algo en nuestras oraciones y alabanzas, en nuestra música o ministerio que los haga sentir parte de nuestra familia y sobre todo parte de la familios, familia de Dios. Todos son bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Amén. As we welcome the spirit of the living God, we invite you to praise the Lord with us. Unfortunately, we can't uh, sing along with our congregational hymns. At home, you can, feel free, but here you can wave your hand, stomp your foot, stand up, dance around, whatever you'd like to do as we celebrate and praise the Lord.
invite you to pray with us as Sister Marva Gray comes forward to lead in our opening prayer. Good morning, College Hill. Good morning. Praise and glory to you, awesome and mighty God. You come like the wind of heaven, unseen, unbidden. Like the dawn, you illuminate, you illuminate the world around us. You grant us a new beginning continually. You warm and comfort us when we need it most. You give us courage, strength, and power beyond anything we could do by ourselves. May our worship be on fire today and every day. May our faith warm us yes. and those around us. And may your love bind us together with people near and far. For we all belong to you. We pray that everything we say and do today and always is in glory and honor of you. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the day of Pentecost. Pentecost comes from the Greek word meaning 50th day. On this day, the Holy Spirit came with wind and flame, empowering the disciples to proclaim the good news of the risen Lord to all people. As the Lord's day is sometimes called the eighth day of creation, Pentecost is a day of new creation, all things being transformed and made new by the word and breath of the living God. That's why the red is everywhere. Just to show, even though we don't see it, sometimes we need a reminder that the Holy Spirit is moving among us. Amen? Amen. 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 We invite you to our call to worship. 
if you would join with us responsibly where that says people, uh, we have both English and Spanish translation, whatever you would need. Come Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Okay, we're going to do that again. Go, go back. We're gonna, that didn't sound very convincing. Come Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn oh. within us, stirring us to action. That's what I'm talking about. Come, Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God and with God for the transformation in the world. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from apathy and complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us that we may be empowered as your people. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. Let us worship the Lord together. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture, I invite you to stand as you are able. It comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 104, verses 24 and 25, 27 through 34, and then 35. Hear now a word from the Lord. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him. May our meditation be pleasing to him. For we rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everyone say, praise the Lord. Amen. We invite you to join us again for our praise and worship. You may stand uh, or you can be seated. It is up to you. Dance, again, wave, whatever makes you feel comfortable. And if you're at home, feel free to sing along. Oh, well, there's going to be music, right? Amen. We have a <laughs> Sister Quantaria, uh, Quantaria, Sister Anastasia <laughs> uh, White will be leading in this praise dance and uh, just praising Reverend the Lord in a mighty way. Tell him I squeeze strength into your hands. <laughs> squeeze that hand say strength to you, strength to you. I declare that you're going to finish this year strong. You're not going to finish this year exhausted. You're not going to finish this year frustrated. You're not going to finish this year out of money. You're going to finish this year strong. Look at your neighbor. Tell him you're going to finish Wrong. Let me minister this to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The word says this in Luke 22. The devil acts for you. <laughs> but I prayed you through so that your faith won't fail. I prayed you through and now you can testify hey listen what I said I would do because I can not lie by the grace 
Amen. Give God some glory for using Sister Anastasia like that. Anybody know that some of those things that you went through that you didn't want to go through made you stronger, made you able to stand strong today? And you know, it takes a lot of strength to not only dance like that, a dance with a mask on. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. As we prepare to go into the rest of our service, as we go into the throne of grace, we always go knowing that we don't always walk the way that we're supposed to. We don't always talk the way that we're supposed to. So we confess our sins before one another and before God because we know that God is the one person who can actually make a difference in our life, who can make us better than who we already are and won't hold against us what we haven't done always right. Let us pray. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We, don't, we do not always listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people doing your will. Through the, through the redeeming love of Jesus Christ and the transform, transforming power of the Holy Spirit, we pray and let the church say amen. amen. Here's the good news that we can always be assured. Through Christ, God has poured out the Holy Spirit upon us for the forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The people say, thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, we have an opportunity for announcements. I apologize. I've had some problems with my computer, so I don't uh, know if I have all the new ones. If there's anybody here that when the announcements come, if I forgot something, I invite you to uh, bring, it, bring, it, bring it up now. Okay, so we have ready to serve. Volunteers are needed on our audiovisual team upstairs, and uh, we invite you to be a part of that. Um, I think we have already one new volunteer, so we're looking forward to uh, getting her started. And uh, we invite you to join us, especially as we go outside, we can use more, even more help. Uh, also, if you would like to be on our finance team, the usher board, all kinds of opportunities for ministry, just uh, notify either myself, the office, or uh, Sister Carol Estelle. And um, you see at the bottom uh, the email and phone number and my email as well are listed there. So you could reach out. Also, does anyone need a scholarship? Anybody need a scholarship? Amen. <laughs> for those that are pursuing uh, higher education scholarships for Christian leaders, they're offering scholarships in particular from the Senate of the Covenant through May 31st. Again, the information is up there. You can get the actual application from the office. And calling all youth, we say, you know, come one, come all, all kinds of talents. Um, just as Sister Anastasia danced, we would love to see more of our youth coming out as, you know, people are getting their vaccines and are feeling more comfortable. We're hoping that we'll be able to get a lot of people more active into the ministry. So you, have, uh, you might have uh, art that you would like to share to inspire or like to start singing again, offer a poem, anything like that. Contact uh, Brother Marcus Johnson, myself, or the office and let us know that you're interested so we can get um, the youth involved. And we are also working, about, working on getting the uh, uh, youth church started hopefully in June um, so that we can get them active again as well. COVID vaccines are still available for those who have not received them. If you know of somebody who needs it, please reach out, contact the office, let us know. We can give them this information. Public Health is um, offering uh, COVID vaccines through the old, Gettys the old Kroger's on Gettysburg, also on Clio Road. And then there's information for the Kettering Health Network that you can call or go to their website. Again, the, just a continuation, there's a number to call for the ones that are at the old Kroger's. Um, to set that up or go to their link. Also, if you're looking for a mission project, we know people who have lost their homes due, uh, from the tornadoes, 
and um, we just still, there are people who haven't recovered yet. We've been blessed, and we've got uh, members here who have rebuilt or, or, or found other houses, but some people are still um, without homes. And so if you're interested in working on a house that has been damaged, um, you see that there's they're looking for volunteers um, June through September. Contact information there, Sally Dyer or Reverend Terry Kaku, both of them. You, you need that information. You can get it in the office also. Now, um, did, did I forget anything? All right. If that's, if that's it, then we've got an opportunity to, um, we would like to always recognize when people are with us that might be visiting for the first time or the third time, if you would like to share with us uh, who you are and where you're from, we have a microphone that the usher will bring around that you can let us know who you are and introduce yourself so that uh, we can know everyone. Anyone want to volunteer to, as a visitor? Or, uh, or, or family that we haven't seen in a while? All right, not, there we go, amen. Not a vis I mean, not a visitor, but let us I remind I felt like us. you were about to call me by name. <laughs> um, I'm Anthony Houston, this is my family. Uh, we are members here, we just haven't been here in a while. Thank you for having us, everything is beautiful. Um, you'll be hearing from our youngest later today. Yeah, we'll be hearing from him because that's the, the, that's the baby that's being baptized, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister Josephine sitting back there smiling. Her grandbaby's about to be baptized. Welcome. To have, good to have all of you with us today. Amen. Anyone else? Okay. He won't stand up, but he's part of the family because... We're all family. Um, this is Antoine Dunson, and he's a visitor today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know how we are in church. We don't like to let anybody get in and get in quietly. Well, since we didn't do that, I want to just say that Susie's parents, Chong and Tom Schweitzer, are here this morning also. They're Amen. The, they, they are the proud grandparents. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we also have, now that you mention it, God calls us to love one another as God loves us. In this we know the truth of Christ's peace. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Ordinarily we would get up, give somebody a hug or a handshake, but we can't do that. I got excited to see Sister Fletcher and I went over there, I grabbed her hand and I shouldn't have. So look, we do, we do have all kinds of uh, sanitizer when you need it, but if you'll just wave, blow a kiss, just let somebody know that you're happy to see them. And we, all, we always like to do this uh, by being sure that we don't just say hello, but we let you know that we love you. And we say, the peace of Christ be with you. And in Spanish, how do we do that, Sister Dominique? The paz de Cristo esté Okay, we invite you to, to try that along with us. La paz de Cristo esté contigo. Amen, amen. God loves you and, there's not, and so do I. So do we, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Amen? Amen? All right. So now we have an opportunity to give, and we always praise God for an opportunity to give back as he has blessed us abundantly. Has God blessed you? Amen. So as we give, we give in a spirit of generosity for all that God has done for us. For Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 8, 12, for if the willingness is there, if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Little becomes much in the hands of the master. Let us bless others with our giving. For those that are present, we ask that you prepare your offering now. For those worshiping online or after, after the service, you may send it directly to College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. 
or you can give electronically through our Faith Life app. We'll have the screen up in a moment. Regardless how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church and in thanksgiving to God. You see the faithlife.com, you can go there with your phone. You can choose College Hill and then look for the rainbow logo. You can add Faith Life to your phone contacts and then put in that phone number and text the word give. It gives you the example. And you can go to faithlife.com online and create a username and a password. Any of those three, if you would like to give that way. Uh, we have, oh, we have... Uh, pieces of paper that are going around with the, as the ushers come around, you can get a piece of paper for a prayer request if you would like to do that. So we invite you to do that as well. I uh, turn you over to follow the directions of the ushers, but let us praise the Lord as we give. Let us pray. God of all blessings and sustainer of every living being, we offer these gifts to build your church and to bring hope to a world that is in need of your love and your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray and let the church say, Amen. Do you have any uh, prayer requests to give me now? We've moved up our, moved up the, uh, on the program. At this time, we just want to lift up those in need of prayer. We continue to uh, lift up the uh, churches of the Miami Valley. There's a, ch there's a church every week that is lifted up, so I believe today is Hamilton Presbyterian Church, located on 23 South Front Street, Pastor John Lewis. We lift up that congregation. Also, uh, that's the same thing, isn't it? Amen. All right, our prayer list. Look, we had Sister Vivian Fletcher on the, uh, on the prayer list. And look, she's here with us. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. 
We know that the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. So we continue to lift up people who we know are in need of prayer. And we also lift up testimonies of what God has done. We continue to lift up uh, Brother Bruce and city, uh, Sister Betty Johnson's granddaughter who um, had a C-section and prayed for their, her continued uh, strength and healing. And as that baby grows and, and God's blessings upon the baby, lifting up Brother Bruce as he's been going through a lot of testing. Uh, lift, continue to lift up um, Elmer Campuzano's um, aunt, uh, Martina Jimenez, who's in stage four cancer and has not been doing well, so we lift up their family. Um, Sister, uh, Sister Delphina and, all, and Brother Elmer and all of their children. We lift up uh, the Townsville family as Brother Lee continues uh, to recover from uh, knee surgery and Sister Pat for her continued nursing abilities. And uh, the Youngs, we lift up Sister Karen Young, who I understand is doing much better from her surgery. Actually will be here in the next month, I think, for Dayton Scholars. Lifting up Jimmy and Sue Thompson, Sister Vicki Eason, Tamara Daniels, Shannon Estelle, now, Sister Darlene Brookshire, raise your hand, amen. Sister Darlene is having surgery in another week and a half, I believe, heart surgery, hallelujah. And so we praise God for having brought her, brought her this far along her way and claiming her healing in the name of Jesus. So we're going to lay hands on her next weekend. You'll be here next weekend? Then we're going to lay hands on you today. You're not isolating today, are you? Okay, then I'm, I'm going to come down there uh, to pray uh, over you then. I'm gonna, uh, I will be with her before that she goes to the hospital. But while we're all gathered, does anybody know that there's power in the, in the gathering of people of faith? We are stronger together than we are ever apart. We continue to lift up um, th those who have lost loved ones, our church members and leadership, justing, healing, and reconcilia reconciliation in our nation for God's peace and protection and revitalization of our uh, community. Prayers for granddo granddaughter Danielle. Danielle? Danielle, stay strong. Amen. Tammy Johnson is in the hospital, very sick. Pray, pray for her. Pray for Kathy Connors and Geraldine Starks. Amen. That comes from Sister Linda Jones. We're going to uh, lift up Brother Bobby, who was supposed to have surgery, and that was postponed. Praying God just keep him until he gets that scheduled. Amen. Um, and lifting up, uh, is there anybody else? We, we have uh, ushers that can bring a microphone around if there's anyone that we've forgotten. Is that enough? Okay, thank you. Um, prayers for uh, Dominique and her boyfriend Cameron Turner as they... Um, travel this week um, for an exciting trip. Oh, um, yeah. So we just pray for their safe travel and mercies in their trip. Amen. And to follow that up, prayers for Sister Q, who's having surgery. <laughs> uh, we just pray for a speedy recovery and blessing the doctors and everything. As we say, we've got two of our praise team members that are having surgery. So just prayers for them and that we already know everything's going to go well. So we just thank God for that ahead of time. Amen. I didn't write fast enough for my prayer request. Um, my daughter was in a car accident up in Michigan, so I'm just praying for healing for her. There was no broken bones, but it was a miracle that they didn't get killed. So I'm just thankful for their, that they survived the accident, but healing for her. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Pray for uh, Brother Mac and Sister Kathy Lakes that traveled out of town to see family and praying for their safe return. Prayers for my daughter, Michelle Keith, who's traveling back to Georgia today. Amen. Amen. Prayers for everyone here. Um, special prayers for my sister and her boyfriend for traveling and my sister for getting surgery. Mr. Bobby as well. Um, just prayers for everyone. Continued prayers for Nelson Stone, who's upstairs, who uh, goes to weekly chemotherapy. We'll keep him in, in prayer for his strength. Amen. Anyone else?
Anyone else? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everyone, I'm going to ask you to extend your arms in this direction, keeping in mind that like I said, we have people all over the congregation that are going into surgeries, that are dealing with sicknesses and all of that. So extend your arms in whatever direction in your hearts all around. Amen. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, wherever would I go? Most gracious and loving God, Lord, we give you thanks because we can call on you, our true source of help and strength in times of trouble. Lord, when we call on you, we know that power comes from on high, that angels will come and attend to us. And whatever it is that's coming against us, Lord, there's nothing that's bigger than you. For you are bigger than anything that there is in the world. And you already knew before you created us what we were going to come up against. You knew when there was going to be sickness. You knew when there was going to be illness. You knew when there was going to be loss. You knew when there was going to be struggle. And you planted within us the gift of your Holy Spirit to remind us of all the things that you taught us and how much you love us and how much you care for us. So, Lord, we're praying for Sister Darlene right now in the name of Jesus. We're claiming that she's going to be able to get through this surgery, Lord. We ask that you be with the doctors and the nurses for all the surgeries that are going to happen, with Brother Bobby, for Sister Q, for everyone. Lord, we're praying that the doctors do what everything, everything that they're supposed to do, and their medicine makes a difference, but your Holy Spirit do what nobody else can to heal from the inside out. Lord, let her come out stronger than she went in, Lord, to be a walking testimony of the goodness and grace of God. Lord, we continue to lift up Sister Vivian Fletcher. Lord, we thank you for bringing her in here this morning. Praise the Lord, keeping her as only you can do. Lifting up Brother Nelson, Lord, lifting up the baby that's be about to be baptized. Lord, everybody that's gathered here, the ones not only in the building, Lord, but the ones that are online, the ones that don't, don't even know how to pray for themselves. Lord, we thank you that somehow our prayers make a difference, that you hear us when we call and we, we cry and you pity every groan. But, Lord, we also thank you that whatever it is that we go through, that neither life nor death nor anything that this world can bring against us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. So we will continue to thank you and praise you with every breath that we have because you are a mighty God and you are worried to be praised. If you believe the word of the Lord and the power of God, then I invite you to say amen, amen, and amen. Now we invite you for our New Testament scripture reading that comes out of the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. The book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. We invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of God's holy word. This is all about the red and the spirit and what God did and what God is doing. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? So how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, El Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phry Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to C Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. No matter what language you spoke, everybody understood the word of God. They, were, they heard them speaking about God's deeds and God's power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What 
does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God, and the people say, thanks be to God. Amen. Gracias a Dios. Amen. Gracias a Dios. Amen. You may be seated.
I don't know about you, but I want to be wherever God is. Praise the Lord that God is everywhere. He's with us here in church. He's with somebody else at home. He's in the hospitals and the nursing homes. He's across the world where there's war and conflict. He's in our own nation where we're fighting amongst ourselves. God is everywhere. And if we would, we would just do what he would ask us to do, we would experience more of God's kingdom on earth. Oh, to be in the presence and spirit of God. I invite you to pray with me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Lord, speak to us right now from your deep treasures of the scripture. But not just words for our hearing, Lord, but life and light to live within us, to grow within us, that your spirit might transform us into the people that you're calling us to be. Lord, let us bear your fruit. Let us share your love, your love, your goodness and grace that you shower upon us each and every day. We'll be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and let the saints say amen, amen, and amen. kind of want to stay right there in the song, but I got to move on because we got a baptism that we want to get to and take care of this family that are here. So if you will, today I would like to talk to you from the theme, when the spirit moves, when the spirit moves. You know, sometimes I wonder as many pastors and preachers do, what when people come to church are they expecting? Why do they come? Are they becoming because they want to or because they think that they're supposed to? Do they show up because they think their attendance record is going to be reviewed in heaven and they're afraid if they don't attend at least once or twice a month, it's going to be held against them later? Or are they coming because they are really seeking after God? because they want to hear him more clearly, because they want a closer walk with the Lord. What are they expecting? Do people really want the enormity, the power, the inexplicable joy and unexpected revelations that come with divine experiences? Or have they given up on these things? As if they only occurred in the Bible, as if such occurrences are myths, or fairy tales and are no longer possible or at least probable that God is going to do something supernatural in their lives. Have they ceased to believe, if they ever did, that these sorts of spiritual occurrences can still happen today? Which makes me ask, what were you expecting when you came to church today? Well, we find in the second chapter of Acts some people who had gotten used to ordinary church. It was predictable. You could set your watch by it. They knew exactly what to expect and when. You see, they had been doing the same things for years just as Moses and the Levitical priests had specified. Of course, they might have added in some stuff over time, but for the most part, it was just the protocol over and over again that was dictated. So having gone this far, the people assumed that there was no reason to change anything. It was just as it should be. They'd go to church every week. They knew that the worship service would begin around 1030, 1035 if we were running late, right? And some folk would come in fashionably late. They knew that there would be some music and some prayer, some preaching, hopefully not too long, an offering. And of course, on first Sunday, there would be communion. And once that was all said and done, the benediction would be spoken, then everybody would shake hands or hug. These days we give a high five, right, or a wave, amen. And then we would all go about our business knowing that we would do it all over again next Sunday. 
So the people figured that they could act however they wanted to all week, regardless of how God felt about it, as long as they came back and asked for forgiveness from time to time so God wouldn't be mad at them. Basically, their religion was doing very little to change their attitude, their circumstances, or their lives. However, on this day, unbeknownst to anyone, things were about to get shaken up. This wasn't going to be just any worship service, but before we get there, we have to look at the setting in which this worship service took place. For Acts chapter 2 marks a very famous and well-known event that many churches observed called Pentecost. You heard about it earlier, right? But that's, that's the new Pentecost. This is the regular Pentecost. The original celebration of Pentecost was nothing new as it was an annual festival of the Jews. But it was even observed by Christians because of its historical significance. For it was the celebration marking when Moses delivered the Ten Commandments after coming down from Mount Sinai and 50 days after the Hebrews were delivered from Egypt. It was a two-day celebration of all that God had done to liberate his people and, and a commemoration of the religious laws that were given to the people to live by in an effort to keep them holy and happy. But this time, the, the festival of Pentecost, it didn't go the way that it usually was planned. It took on a life of its own. And see, I doubt that the apostles understood the enormity of what occurred at the time. But looking back now, it is amazing that the church does not pay more attention to and, and give more relevance to Pentecost today. For Pentecost marks the birth of the church as we know it. Had it not been for Pentecost, it is likely that Christianity would have fizzled out a long time ago. Because this day of Pentecost, it marks the continuation of the ministry of Jesus after he had been crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, rec resurrected right? And then he ascended up into heaven. And so nobody knew what to do next. This is the fuel that ignited a fire that has not burned out over 2,000 years later after Christ left the world in his body, right? Spirit still presides. Yet we have to wonder, if Pentecost is the formation of the church as we know it, then why aren't we expecting the same spirit-filled, power-infused, life-changing experiences that revolutionized God's people back then? I mean, did the Holy Spirit take over the church just once? Rarely to return again? Or are we somehow missing the mark? Are our low expectations blocking the movement of God in our lives? See, back then, did the apostles expect that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, did, did they think it would be anything this big and powerful? Uh, did, they, did they know that it was gonna, what Jesus promised was going to be something as big as it was? Tell your neighbor through your mask, something big is coming. Amen. Something big is coming. See, they knew to expect something because Jesus had promised them it would, just like he promised us. But see, they didn't know when or how because you never know how the Holy Spirit is going to move. So when the Holy Spirit came upon them, it was miraculous. It, and whether they meant to or not, the disciples, they caused such a commotion that it rocked the whole city of Jerusalem. People came from everywhere. Can you imagine worshiping so deeply and so powerful that people would just come over here just to see what was going on? It's kind of like when you're on the highway, right, and there's an accident. Traffic doesn't always stop and slow down just to be safe, but we get stuck behind people who slow down and even stop because they want to know what's going on, right? He called them looky-loos because <laughs> people don't want to be left out. We want to be in the know. So if there is a crowd and something unusual occurring, people will come, if for no other reason than curiosity. It's amazing the things that God will do just to get our attention. Like you had to think about it, many of the churches as well of us, as well as us, had to go through a pandemic in order for us to go out to the parking lot and worship. 
But when we did, people not only in the church but in the community were touched. That's why we're going to go outside again as soon as we can, even though it's going to be hot. Even though it might be windy, there's something different about doing things differently than we used to. By allowing God to take over, by putting a pool out on the lawn and allowing people to be baptized, it might not be tradition, it might not be what we've always done, but we don't know that God can do how many of us know. God can do exceedingly and abundantly all that we could ask or imagine. Do you believe that? According to the power that worketh in us, right? God's power is within us. So if we just open ourselves up to God's will, eyes have not seen nor ears heard nor mind imagined what God has in store for those who love him. We can do what we've always done and get what we've always gotten. But God has bigger plans for us than that. Why would an omnipotent God, an all-powerful God, be content with canned, planned, set your clock by, and your expectations by it, worship? Why would God, who is the author and finisher of our faith, settle for anything less than lives being transformed and being delivered every day? It's not just about church, it's about our lives. The fire and the power of the Holy Spirit, when it comes down to people who are open to receiving it, it is unlike anything you could ever experience. When the spirit of the living God falls afresh on you, it's better than any drug or alcohol that you have ever had. Peter said, they're not drunk. They're not drunk. They're high on God. The spirit of the almighty has them talking and acting like that. And once you catch that sort of fire, you want to keep it going as long as you can. You want to keep stroking that heat and keeping that passion, that joy, unspeakable joy going on in your heart every day. You want to have the power of God afresh in you every day because it will aliven you at work and in your home and with your families, wherever you go. You can have the power of God working within you. Now, you might have been th thought you were having a good time when you were doing things the way that you wanted to do it. You might have been thinking that you were having a good time at the club. Don't act like you haven't been there before. You might have thought you were having a good time when you had a drink and you got a little tipsy from that. And don't act like you haven't done that either. But that there's nothing like the power of God working within you. That's why the saints say, ain't nothing like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Amen? is not just a one-time occurrence. It's not just something that can happen in a special church service. The power of God is perpetual. It's infinite. It is everlasting. And once you have it, it can live and work through you all the time. If you, wanted to have, if you want to have a blessed and abundant life, you can have it every day because the power and presence of God doesn't give up and it never runs out. Not only that, but the, the Holy Spirit, it brings people together, people from all walks of life. You don't have to speak the same language. You don't have to come from the same neighborhood. It doesn't matter how much education you have or where you work or how much money you make or what kind of car you drive, whether you've been in church all of your life or if you just got here today. People may worry about that sort of stuff, but I'm telling you that God looks at other things. See, I'm sure that people didn't plan on getting saved that day of Pentecost. They weren't prepared for what, what they were going to experience, but the Lord knew that when he sent power from on high, people would be changed, and they needed to be changed in order to move forward. Jesus was gone. And the people, they were confused about what to do now. Believers from everywhere, including the disciples, they had no idea what to do next. Have you ever been stuck trying to figure out what to do with your life? Wondering what's next? And if you're going to do anything significant? Once Jesus was crucified, that was every indication that the revolutionary ministry that he had begun had prematurely come to an end. Power and hope were gone. They thought the miracles and teachings and the healings and everything that happened, they would probably cease. After all, who was there left to pick up the mantle? Those pitiful disciples who had followed him before? The ones who were always bickering amongst themselves about who was the greatest? The same ones who scattered when Jesus was arrested? Yes, based on the evidence, the movement that Jesus had started had come to a halt. 
Sometimes it feels like that now, that everything's been scattered in a pandemic, in a nation of turmoil, with violence in our society. It can feel like the power of Jesus has gone away and he's given up on us. And back then, Jesus could have done just that. He could have said, I don't want just one new disciple to replace Judas. I want to replace all 12 of them, ones that won't doubt me, ones that won't deny me when people ask about me or run away when things get tough. But instead, Jesus says, I can use them as long as they believe in me. I can use them even though they might be flawed and imperfect, even if they don't always do what they're supposed to do. They've got good hearts. They love God. They mean well. They just need help. So he tells them, wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I will show you what I can do even with the likes of any of you. Aren't you glad that you serve a Savior who doesn't hold your mistakes against you? Come on now. Who doesn't throw your failures up in your face like people will do. Who will use you despite your past. In fact, will use you sometimes because of it. Because if he can save you knowing all that you've done or not lived up to, then that lets other people know that he can use anybody. There's a reason that God doesn't wait for us to change in order to claim us. You don't have to get your life together before you come to Jesus. He calls us in the midst of our sin and our shame so we'll know and so everybody else will know that is nothing but God that saved us and changed us. We need to stop pretending like we've been holy all of our lives, like we came out of our mother's wombs righteous, right? You know you've done some stuff. You might not want to admit it, and maybe nobody will tell about it, but i got to talk to some people who can relate to me, some folk who can admit that they didn't always walk on the straight and narrow, the, the, those who can admit that they've had a bad temper and fuss and cuss at people from time to time. Come on, Peter. That There's people who will admit that they might drink a little too much and embarrass themselves. Somebody knows what it's like to lose a job because you weren't always dependable. Somebody knows what it's like to let down somebody and not keep our word. Or there's other people who might say, I've got bad credit or a bad witness, who weren't always the best parents or people that they could be, who had a child and questioned circumstances come on Mary who did some things that that we hope nobody else will find out about God needs some people who are willing to admit that they know what it's like not to be perfect in fact who can admit that they're not even maybe perfect in the present even after they've been saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit maybe they've done some stuff just yesterday or plan on getting into some stuff after they leave church today amen but it's imperfect people who need a Holy Spirit experience to remind them that God's still in control. They need to be filled and touched and turned around and changed. They need to hear from a God who meets them where they are to speak to them in their circumstances. Everybody at Pentecost that day heard God in their own way, in a way that they could understand. Have you ever been sitting in church and the preacher spoke your language? I mean, is it, is it if the sermon was written just for you? Have you ever been in the pew and it was like God calling out your name and as if he was telling you all about yourself? It's like that song, uh, Killing Me Softly. Don't act like you don't, don't know it. You've heard music outside of church. And, and the song is timeless. Roberta Flack made it famous, and then the Fugees and Lauren Hill brought it back with a new twist. The song says, strumming my pain with his fingers. Singing my life with his words, killing me softly with his song, right? Telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly. Have you ever been in church and the preacher spoke to you like that? You felt like the spotlight was on you. They had to notice how uncomfortable you were because God was calling you out in front of everybody. I ask some members who they'll come to me after the service sometimes and they'll say, Pastor, you really stepped on my toes today. And I tell them, I, and they say, you were looking right at me. One of the people used to say, oh, why do you always stare at me when you say somebody's doing something wrong? And I said, you know, I, I, if I preached what you needed to hear, it wasn't me. It may have looked like me, but it was the Holy Spirit speaking through me. Because when the Holy Spirit is unleashed, there is no denying it. 
When God comes after you, he speaks to you deep in your heart. He will replay everything that has gone on in your life. He'll take the hurt and the pain, the joy and the sorrow. He'll flash it in your face and say, watch this. And then he'll say, I'll make it all better. He'll say, I know all about you. I created you. I will know you deeper and more intimate than any person ever has or ever will. And nobody will ever love you like me. God says, I'm going to speak to you and touch you in a way that you can understand. So you know that I am God. But this shouldn't be a surprise. This is what Jesus talked about. Everything that we do in worship and in prayer should be devoted to invoking the power of the Holy Spirit in our church and more importantly, in our lives. We should ask the Holy Spirit to take us over. Religion is so often reduced to repetition as if it's a well-organized play. But Jesus said, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit... Everything changes. You are no longer a person under God or governed by God, but the God part of you is unleashed. You are to be free in Christ is to be free indeed. That's what happens when the spirit moves. Every day can be Pentecost if you let God have his way. In a few minutes, we're about to baptize a, a young man. Might appear a baby, but God has already planted within, within him who he is going to be. It is a recognition of what God has already started. And by doing this here in this family of faith, we are starting something in him that's going to grow in him from every moment forward. We're already claiming what God has already done. We need to do this with our young people all the time because sometimes they don't get off to the right start. Sometimes they don't have anything to call on. Sometimes they don't know what it's like to know that they're not by themselves. But by doing this, we're affirming what God is doing in him until he can speak to say it for himself. And just because he can't speak it doesn't mean that God's not doing it. Because God is working through each and every one of us, looking to unleash us however we can be unleashed if we will just allow God to work in our lives. That's what happens when the spirit moves. Won't you praise God for the things that he has done? Right now, the doors of the church are open. The doors to the kingdom are open. There might be someone who is yet today to give themselves over to the Spirit of God, to ask God to move in them and through them. You can do this by yourself as much as you would like. We can all go our own way. But there's nothing like the Spirit of God to give you power that you can't have by yourself, to give you strength when you feel weak, to give you courage when you're afraid, to give, your heal, give you healing when you're feeling sick, to give you joy when you're feeling down, and to give you peace when everything around you is going crazy. That peace that passes all understanding, only God can give. So we open the doors of the church that there might be someone yet today that has yet to give in to that still small voice that calls and offering abundant life. Is there one? The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are, are open. If you're in need of prayer, we'll do that. If you're looking for a church home, you need not look any further. The doors of the church are open. <laughs> I can't even hug you. <laughs> well, you know, I love you. Amen. Amen. Where's Sister Marva? Sister Marva here. I'm um, going to ask you to come forward. We need to prepare for the baptism anyway, but the doors of the church are open.
come forward, Sister Deborah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I want to hug you too. I can't look. This is so hard. <laughs> Love you and God bless you. Sister Deborah Bird comes forward to rededicate her life. Amen. Amen. Sister Dominique has come forward to join the church. So, amen. I ask you to come forward. There's a, uh, if you don't have a pen, one up here because we want to get a record of, of this for both of them. And we want to pray over you in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? The doors of the church are open. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. You don't need any special privileges. All you have to do is be willing to give yourself over to Christ. Is there one? Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. He moves when you don't, when you least suspect it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, the doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. Amen, amen. All right, seeing no others, let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you for giving us what we need when we don't even know that we need it. For walking with us, Lord, wherever we go, for never letting go of our hand. For, Lord, keeping your hand of protection and provision over us when we didn't deserve it and when we did. And, Lord, for always letting us know that we're never by ourselves, we are never alone, and we are always loved by you. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon Sister Deborah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you touch her from the top of her head, from the bottom of her feet. Lord, as she rededicates herself, Lord, we know that you are already moving in her. She might have thought she moved a little bit far from you, Lord, but you were never far from her, Lord, and she is just telling you that she wants to do whatever you're asking of her. Lord, move in her, use her, however it is that you're, you already are doing that, Lord. But, Lord, take her to that next level, that next level in praise, that next level in glory as only you can do. Lord, bless her and her family, Lord, and for her faithfulness, Lord, pour into her all that she gives out and more. Bless her and keep her as only you can do. Lord, we thank you for fruit that continues to come, Lord, for the blessing of people who come and say, let me, be account let me be counted among the many. So, Lord, we thank you for Sister Dominique, Lord. We thank you. We welcome her into the church, Lord. We have, you know, some things that we have to do in proto protocol, but it's already done. You've already said when those who you call, if they're willing, if you will confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, that Jesus is the Son of God and you are the one true God, then we will be saved. So Lord, we thank you that as they continue to join with us in our family of faith, as they continue to dedicate their lives, Lord, that you will guide their feet and their paths, Lord, and we know that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them and strengthens us. We'll be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and let the church say amen. Amen. Get both of them down. You got both. Now I'm going to invite the Houston, the Houston family to come forward. I just want to test and see if we can hear you. You all say hello. Hi. There we go. Amen. We heard you. Amen. Any fr uh, friends and close family of the Houstons, we invite you to come forward at this time.
Yeah, come on up. Now you all are family, so however you need to stand apart or, you know. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Uh-oh. That's all right. That's all right. We're almost done. And we're all friends here, sweetie. Go ahead. Pastor. Yes. Members and friends, on behalf of the session, I present Nathan O. Dayan Houston for baptism. His parents, Anthony and Susan Houston, offer him to God in the presence of our congregation. Amen. Now, I'm going to be sure we're saying this right. Nathaniel Dehun. 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 Nathaniel Dehun Houston. Amen. Romans 6, 3 and 4 says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. The promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we share in the death and resurrection of Christ and are incorporated into Christ's holy church. By the sign of water, God perpetually cleanses us from sin, renews life, and prefigures the reconciliation of all things promised in Christ. In baptism, we are promised the Holy Spirit as a pledge of this reconciliation. The same Spirit binds us to each other and joins us to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember and rejoice in our own baptism as we celebrate this sacrament. Let us all profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You all can follow along on the screen. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. This question goes to the parents. Jesus told his disciples to receive the little children and forget them not. Anthony and Susan. As you present your son for the sacrament of baptism, let me, remind, let me remind you this is an act of worship and public confession. Therefore, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, will you respond by saying, we do? Do you claim God's love and God's ownership for your child and on behalf of your child? Do you look in faith to Jesus Christ for his salvation as you do for yourself? If so, say, we do. Do you now unreservedly promise in humble reliance upon God's grace to set an exemplary life for your son of what the new Christ in life is like? And do you therefore intend and promise to teach your son to understand, and I'm going to say sons, to understand the importance of God's love and what it means to his life to the best of his ability so that he will always know that God loves and cares for him and so say we, will, we do and we will with the help of God. To the godparents, I believe there are godparents on here, Austin Lowry and Alex Schweitzer Kroll. Do you understand that you are a support to the parents and an extension of their care to this child? If so, say, please say, if so, please say we do. We do. Amen. 
Therefore, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage Nathaniel to be a faithful Christian and to be a central part of the village that raises this child? If so, say, we do and we will with the help of God. We do and we will with the help of God. Amen. Congregation members, if you'll please stand. As you stand here with these parents and godparents, do you promise to assist them with parenting tasks, parenting tasks, amen, <laughs> in their presence and in their absence, through prayer, example, encouragement, in whatever way that you can? If so, say, we do and we will. We do and we will. Do you, members and friends of this congregation, in the name of the whole Church of Christ, Undertake with these parents the Christian nurture of this child whenever the opportunity avails itself so that in due time Nathaniel may confess faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Will you strive by your fellowship and example to strengthen their family ties with the household of God? If so, say we do and will with the help of God. We do and we will with the help of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come giving thanks for having blessed us with the presence of this beautiful child and for the joy that his life brings. Bless this act of baptism as we seek to turn his life over to you. Send your Holy Spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Perpetually wash away the sin of all who are being cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. It is in the name of Jesus we pray and let the church say amen. Nathaniel Dehan Houston, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Lord, bless this family as only you can do. Bind them together in your love. The, the village that is around them is always with them. They are never by themselves. They are not walking alone. You have already started a mighty thing in him, and I see it in his brother, Lord. Bless them up. Let them lean on one another, but most of all, lean on you. Congregation, Godparents. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. No, that's right. Congregation, Godparents, everyone, will you pray in the spirit with me for this child and his parents as we pray for them on our behalf. Almighty God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray for your child, Nathaniel Dehyun Houston. Watch over him and guide him as he grows in faith. Help him to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, baptized as your child. Your son, be your son was, he was your son before he was ours. We pray for his parents, Brother Anthony and Sister Susan Houston. Help them to love with your love. Teach your truth. Instill courage, humility, and self-worth. And to tell and show the story of Jesus to their sons so that, th that your will and your word may grow in him and them. May Nathaniel be preserved and protected according to thy will all the days of his life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. Ordinarily, we have a charge and all of these things. What I'm going to say is uh, we can't stay in here. We have to go outside. But I encourage you to be sure you greet them as we leave from this place. Um, right now, I will say now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless with, before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. And let the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>